Let's just go over real quick the rules for this. Briefly, this paragraph reads here that you are not allowed to write on the paper, only the checks. So when you're done with an item, you can check it off, and that is it. You must touch and fully explain what you are inspecting. Okay, remember that touch and fully explain only the things that are listed here, nothing else. Okay, so the examiner is going to come take your paperwork. They're going to go back inside, check your stuff, your license, make sure you don't have any tickets. You'll be sitting in the truck for a couple minutes without them. So during this time, make sure you put on your seatbelt and you're just going to wait patiently for the examiner to return. So <clears throat> let's say the examiner walks in. Okay, good afternoon, good morning, whatever. Okay, I'm now ready to start my pre-trip inspection. So the in-cab inspection is going to be done exactly the same way as we've done it always for years and years. Even though it does say air brake test and then parking and trailer brake test, that's the tug test. Service brake check, that's also done with the tug test. So the order of the checklist may seem different than what I'm doing, but we're just using it for the check. It is not in any particular order. Okay, but you do have to do each section at a time. So the bold leathers. So right now we are doing the in-vehicle engine start. Okay, turn the key one click to the right for electricity. All I need to see is my air pressure right now to make sure that I'm not over 90. If I am, I'm going to pump it down below 90. Go ahead and fan the brake down. Okay, let the gauges catch up. Okay, I am below 90 PSI on both gauges. I'll make sure the truck is in neutral, clutch down, truck is in neutral, selector is down. My valves are out, which means the brakes are applied. I can go ahead and start the truck. I will slowly remove my foot from the clutch. My ABS light blinked on and off, telling me it's working properly. My oil pressure rose within three to five seconds. If it did not, I would shut the truck off. During this time, I'm waiting for the air pressure to build up between 120 and 140. My governor cutoff valve should go off and that tells me my air system is fully charged and there are no leaks in the system. So at this time, you are just waiting. Do nothing until that governor goes off. During this time, you can grab the checklist again. You know, start to go over. You are currently doing the air brake check, so don't check anything off yet. Just kind of look it over, see what you have, you know, briefly just go through it while you're sitting here waiting for the air pressure to build up. There's nothing else you can do. Okay. Good, 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 good. Now, remember for this checklist too, we do not do passenger school bus. School bus, we don't do that, so don't pay attention to that. I'm not going to mark it because you can't draw on this paper. Okay. Now, we just patiently sit and wait for the air pressure to build up. That's all we can do. If the examiner asks you to help it along, all they mean is to accelerate it a little bit, hold it, steady, make sure it's not going up and down, up and down, up and down. This will help build the air pressure quicker, right? Only do that if they ask you to do it. Sometimes they're not in a rush. Sometimes they are. Get familiar with this noise. Okay, that was my governor cutoff valve. It just went off. Tells me the air system is fully charged. There are no leaks in the system. Now, we are going to go into the air brake check, which is the applied brake test. So I'm going to go ahead and put the truck in first gear. Clutch down. First gear. Turn the truck off, keeping your foot on the clutch. Once the engine settles and it stops moving, slowly release your foot from the clutch. Give me electricity because I need electricity for the gauges and the lights. And last, I'm going to push my valves in. That will release my brakes. So a good way to remember that, because it has to be in order. Stick, first gear, key off, key on, valve, valve. Stick, key, key, 
valve. Stick, key, key, valves. Stick, key, key, valves. Okay, it's really important. A lot of people fail there. So just try not to mess up the order. Has to be in gear before you turn it off. All right, now I'm set up for the brake test. I didn't do the brake test yet. The first part of the brake test is the one minute hold. You will have a stopwatch here. You're going to go ahead, watch your air gauges. You're going to apply pressure to the service brake, about medium pressure. Start the clock, okay? You're gonna hold it for a minute and 10 seconds. Once your time is up, you tell the examiner, release your foot from the brake. I did not lose any more than four PSI within one minute, telling me there are no leaks in the system. I will go ahead and fan the brakes down to below 60 PSI, and my low air warning light and buzzer should activate. Okay. Low air warning lights. Oh, sorry. Low air warning light and buzzer is going off, telling me it's working properly. Now I will continue to fan the brakes down to below 40, in which my valves should pop out. So I'm gonna go ahead and look here. Don't put your hands anywhere near it. You don't want them to think you pulled them out by accident. Keep your hands on the steering wheel when you're doing this. And keep going until they both pop out because one may pop out before the other. Okay, both of my valves popped out telling me that the spring brakes are working properly. Go ahead, shut your truck off. Give yourself a second grab your checklist let's just take a step back to the beginning now we can make our first official check mark and we can go ahead and check off the air brake check because that's finished so now we're gonna jump ahead a little bit because we have to do another safe start we're not gonna do the tug test yet we're gonna do another safe start first the truck has to be on so again sweep the gauges you're under 90 psi the truck is not in neutral Put it in neutral. Both of my valves are out. Go ahead and start the truck. Oil pressure came up within three to five seconds. If it did not, I would shut the truck off. My ABS light, it blinked on and off, telling me it's working properly. At this time, this is when your checklist is gonna come in handy because we're not gonna go over the entire in cab. It's only, only what they're asking for. So let's go in order here. Lighting indicators, let's go ahead and do that. My left signal indicator is working properly. My right signal indicator is working properly. My four-way flasher indicator is working properly. Go ahead and turn your headlights on so I can check my high beam indicator that it's working properly. Leave the headlights on. Go ahead and make your second check for the lighting indicators that is complete. Emergency equipment, which would be, first, my seat belt, it's secured to the cab, it's not ripped, frayed, or torn, it unlatches and it catches properly. Next would be my three reflective triangles. They are secured in their red box, they are clean, not cracked or broken, and all three are present. My fire extinguisher, which is on the other side of my seat, I would check to make sure 10 pound ABC fire extinguisher, fully charged, up to date, secured with a pin. Emergency equipment is complete. Next is gonna be windshield and traffic monitoring devices. So let's go ahead and do the windshield. The windshield is clean, not cracked or broken. No cracks larger than one inch, no illegal stickers. The windshield seal is not dry rotted, not cracked, no visible leaks. So that's good, windshield is done. Wipers and washers. Go ahead, turn the stick. My windshield wiper arm is straight, not bent or broken, not cracked. My windshield wiper blade is making full contact. It's not ripped or torn or frayed. And the fluid, I'll fill it up. It's empty right now. The windshield washer fluid is empty. I'll fill it up as soon as possible. But if it was dispensing, I would say that it's cleaning the windshield properly. Okay, wipers and washers, done heater and defroster so let's go ahead and put the full setting on let's go ahead and put the defrost on make sure i feel air coming through 
Okay, I feel air coming through telling me there are no obstructions in my vents. I would use my defrost to clean fog or frost off my windshield. Go ahead and put it on the upper and lower. The max setting, I feel air coming through my vents telling me there are no obstructions in my vents. Okay. Heater and defroster, done. Okay, we're gonna do the horns now. For this truck, I have a city horn. Works properly. The air horn is right here. Works properly. Okay, horns. Done. All right, so because there's not much to check, like we used to check the gauges and all this stuff, but this is all they want right now. So we can't go ahead and do these two yet because I have to wait for the governor cutoff valve to go off. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for the governor cutoff valve to go off. Once it goes off, then I can continue to the tug test. Now we just sit and we wait. I'm gonna help it along for the sake of the video. Again, don't do this unless they ask you to at any point. Governor cutoff valve, it went off telling me the air tanks are full, system is fully charged, no leaks in the system. Now I'm gonna go ahead, take a step back, do my parking and trailer brake check. That is the tug test. The so first thing we're gonna do, put the truck in first gear, clutch down, first gear, push in the red valve. By doing that, we're going to test the tractor brake because this is still activated. Wait for that hissing noise to slow down or at least come to a full stop. Slowly release your foot from the clutch till you feel the truck tug on the brakes. Okay. That tells me that my tractor brake is holding properly. Pull out the red valve. Push in the yellow valve. Now I'm testing my trailer brake. Leave it in gear. Foot off the clutch slowly. Feel the tug on the brake. Okay. That tells me my trailer brake is holding properly and my fifth wheel is secured. Put your foot on the service brake now. Release the red valve. Keep the yellow valve in. You have no spring brakes activated right now. Service brake has to be on. Leave it in gear. Slowly release the clutch. Once you feel the tug on the brakes, Release the service brake. Let the truck move up five to 10 feet. Okay, clutch down first, brake, come to a full stop, smooth. Put it back in neutral. Pull both of your valves out, okay? My spring brake, sorry, my service brake is working properly. My truck has come to a full stop. It did not pull to either side which means the components are wearing even and they're all in good condition. Okay, truck's in neutral, brakes are out. I'm gonna go ahead and put my flashes on, put my headlights on. My in-cab inspection is complete. Take the key with you. Take the key with you and you will exit the truck and wait for, I mean, you're gonna do the outside pre-trip, but just say I'm gonna wait for further instruction. They will guide you and tell you what you need to do next. I'm gonna cut the video here and start a new one on the outside. Okay, so we're in the front of the truck now. I have my checklist with me. Again, bring a clipboard, guys. So, you know, it just looks professional, it looks clean. That way you don't have to lean the paper on your leg or the truck and rip the paper open and bring a pen with you. Okay, now, 
see the first check from the uh from where we left off oh let's make our checks on the oh never mind so you have the all external lights which is pretty much all the lights here the marker lights and everything around the truck so that's actually going to be the last check that you get because you need to make it around the whole truck to check all of them but first we're going to go to the front of vehicle engine area that section so it says lenses fluid levels fluid and air leaks steering systems okay so that's under the hood and some of the components mainly the steering suspension and the brakes so you're going to see pretty much this section here front of vehicle and steering axle we're going to do that right now so lenses let's start with that lenses would be the headlights the headlamp the, he the headlights headlamps whatever you want to call it proper color oh, there's no proper color properly illuminated clean not cracked or broken uh the four-way flashers proper color amber clean not cracked or broken properly illuminated okay i'm gonna go ahead and check off the check for lenses okay so lenses is done okay fluid levels so we're gonna go ahead and open up the hood Clip it. Clip it. Okay, open up the hood. I'm holding the phone, but you're gonna have to have two hands here, one foot here, one foot on the floor. Okay, two hands on the hood here. I'm just not doing it because I'm holding the phone. Okay, now again, fluid levels, fluid and air leaks. So that's pretty general to both sides fluid levels so we're going to check the level of the coolant reservoir it's at a good level right now if it was low i would fill it to the proper level with the proper manufacturing specific coolant wait till it's cool to the touch okay the fluid levels are good windshield washer reservoir check the level if it's low i'll fill it up make sure it's not cracked it's not leaking the reservoir for the coolant it's not cracked it's not leaking so that's the fluid and air leaks. There are no air lines on this side. We'll just break air lines. Again, you're listening for any audible leaks. Yeah, here it is. Listening for any audible leaks, all right? Fluid leaks and audible leaks and fluid levels, okay? So we can check that off after we're done with the other side. Okay, do, 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 do. Once we get to this side, I have my power steering reservoir, power steering fluid, check the level. Again, the level's good. If it wasn't, I'd fill it with proper manufacturing specific power steering fluid. Uh, the dipsticks, just check the dipstick and the fill tube, make sure it's not leaking. Anything with fluid passing through, I'm checking to make sure there's no leaks on the floor. Again, any air hoses, I'm listening for any air leaks. Uh, okay, so we can check fluid levels are done. Fluid and air leaks are done. Now we have steering systems, okay? Steering systems, which would be the entire steering system. Steering shaft, no more than two inches of play. Secured with U-joints and is properly greased. The hardware is present. Secured to the steering gearbox. This is not cracked or leaking. It's not damaged. Secured to the frame. My pitman arm, my drag link, my steering knuckle, and my tie rod, which is the straight bar down there. All secured with castle nuts castle nuts and cotter pins and they're properly greased okay let's go back check the steering systems that's good so steering system is done okay steering systems is done next we're going to go to where it says steering axle okay it says tires again just follow the order even though it seems a little the order seems a little weird but at least you're following the paper. So even if you can't remember the order, the order's right in front of you. So let's do tires, where it says here, tires. My tires, specifically the steer one. I'm gonna check the side walls, the inner wall and the outer wall. No abrasions, bubbles, or cuts. They're beaded and seated to the rims. I'll check the treads. They're in good condition, not damaged, not cut. No less than four thirty seconds of an inch. I'll check it with a tread depth gauge in three different spots to make sure it's wearing out evenly. These cannot be recapped and they cannot be regrooved. 
and your two steering tires must be matching same size tires okay now we can check off the tires let's do the rims my rims they're round no cracks no illegal welding the bead in seated to the tires check the outer rim and i'll check the inner rim no illegal welding again so that's good lug nuts i have all 10 lug nuts they're present they are tight if they were loose i would see rust streaks if this was an aluminum rim i would see white powder okay check off lug nuts that's good next is springs airbags and shocks there's no airbags in the front here just springs and shocks so we're going to check the leaf spring hanger mounts right here they're not cracked or broken secured to the frame <laughs> the frame itself it's not cracked not damaged no illegal welding the leaf spring which is this it's not cracked not damaged no illegal welding it's secured to the mounts this is the saddle right here that's also not cracked or broken these two pieces here are the u-bolts that's not cracked or broken they're secured with the four nuts underneath and that holds the leaf spring to the axle the axle is in good condition i have a shock absorber here the shock absorber is not cracked or broken no visible leaks okay so that's good suspension is pretty much done checked all of that so we check off springs now we're going to do brake lines hoses and leaks so let's go ahead and check the brake chamber you got the rubber hose no audible leaks no abrasions bubbles or cuts the abs wire which is right here no illegal tape corrosion or burns my brake chamber no audible leaks secured with a seat clamp the push rod and the slack adjuster secured with two pins and a cotter pin i'll check the free play there should be no more than one inch of free play on the push rod <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go ahead inside the rim here, which is kind of hard to see. Actually, no, this one you can see, there's no cover. So this brake shoe is cracked, but that's okay. So I'm gonna check the depth of the brake shoe, no less than a quarter inch. There could be no debris, grease, or oil between the brake shoe and the brake drum. And I'll check the brake drum, make sure it's perfectly round, no illegal welds, not cracked. So we just did the brakes, we did the brakes, brake lines, hoses, and leaks brake contaminants which is what i just said about the brake shoe and the brake drum no debris grease or oil okay now we're going to go to the side of the vehicle as you can see that we are on to the next section you can see there's a lot less information than there used to be for part or for the front of the truck so now we're going to go to the side of the truck and again not much going on here it says lenses and reflectors traffic monitoring devices battery fuel tank and frame so let's do the lenses and reflectors i have the four-way flasher in front of me proper color amber clean not cracked or broken properly illuminated no dot tape on the tractor that's good so we're gonna do okay so that's pretty much good there lenses and reflectors for the tractor Uh, okay, you can't write like that on if your pen doesn't work then you're out of luck. I don't know why this pen's not working Okay battery the battery box for this truck is right below the steps the driver steps I Would test I would check the batteries do not open it on the test I would check the batteries for any leaking make sure they're not cracked check the connections make sure they're not corroded Check the wires for any illegal tape corrosion or burns Battery done fuel tank the fuel tank is right here I'll check the metal straps, make sure they are present with the rubber backing. That's to prevent damage to the tank. The straps are secured with their hardware to the frame. I'll check the cap, make sure the rubber seal is present inside and the chain is present. I'll check the tank for any damage, make sure it's not leaking. Fuel tank, done. Frame, I'm going to go ahead and do the frame. The frame of the truck, make sure it's not cracked, no illegal welding, no cracks. All the holes you see are manufactured holes. Okay, frame is done. Now, where it says combination vehicles only, that means tractor trailer. So air, electric lines, and connectors. I'm gonna pick up where we left off. I lost space on the phone. Combination vehicles only, which is tractor trailer. Air and electric lines and connectors. Let's go ahead and do that. So you see how this is wrapped? That allows the lines to drag on the catwalk, so that's okay. If this was not present, it would have to be up. My red line and my blue line, those are my air lines, checking for audible leaks. 
the connections, make sure the rubber seal is present inside. It's not dry rotted or cracked. Do not open it on the test. My plug, the green wire, no illegal tape, corrosion, or burns. The plug itself, the receiver has seven pins, the plug has seven holes, and they're greased. Air electric lines and connectors done. Fifth wheel skid plate or pintle hook or tow hitch. Fifth wheel skid plate is all you need to worry about. King pin and apron is all you need to worry about. And locking and safety devices is all you need to worry about. So we're gonna go ahead and do the fifth wheel coupling system the way we've always done it, and that would cover those couple points. So we're gonna come here. My apron, apron has manufactured holes, nothing illegal, no illegal welding either. The apron has no daylight between the skid plate and the apron. The skid plate, which is this piece here, it's not cracked or broken, and it's secured to the platform using this pin and cotter pin right here. Right here is my lock jaw handle. It is in the closed position. It's not cracked or broken, it's straight. The platform, which is this, all the whole, oh, sorry, all the nuts and bolts are present, and that's securing it to the frame of the truck. That's also not cracked or broken, good condition. We're gonna go underneath the truck. We're gonna check out the kingpin. The kingpin, which is inside there, it's that silver piece. Shiny, shiny silver piece right there, okay? I'm gonna check to make sure there's grease, which you can see, and that thing in front, that little bar in front, that is the lock jaw tooth. It's coming, uh, it's fully closed. It is in front, there's grease, kingpin's there, secure to the apron, and that's all good. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at the paper again. Let's go back to our checklist. So we did the kingpin apron done, locking devices done. Now where it says trailer only, landing gear clearance and reflective tape, let's go cover that. So my landing gear right here is here. I'll check the handle. It's on the other side of the truck. I'll make sure it's in the proper stowed position. Landing gear shoe is properly suspended off of the ground for driving and the shoe is in good condition. It's not cracked or broken. My reflective tape on the trailer, it's present white and red, good condition all the way down the side skirt. Now let's come back here. We did this, okay. Landing gear clearance, reflective tape, good. Rear of trailer, there's gonna be lenses and reflectors and then passenger school bus, we don't do these two parts. So right here, all we have to do is lenses and reflectors and we're done. Okay, so go ahead and hit the rest of your lights that you didn't hit, because remember, we gotta go back and hit that external light point. Four-way flash is working, proper color, amber, clean, not cracked or broken. ABS lights working properly. Come back here, my four-way flasher should be going off. Clean, not cracked or broken, functioning properly, properly illuminated. Clearance lights, marker lights on top, proper. Clean, not cracked or broken, properly illuminated. License plate, light, make sure it's properly illuminated. Okay, and there is no reflective tape. Well, there is some on the DOT bumper here. It's not required, so if you don't see it, don't mention it. But if you see it, it's mentioned it's there, it's in good condition. Come to this side, my four-way flasher, proper color amber, clean, not cracked or broken, properly illuminated. And that is it. Go back over your checklist. Make sure you hit everything. If you're not sure, you can always ask the examiner questions. They don't have to answer it, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Okay, that completes the in-cab inspection for class A.